Hello, this is Justin Smith, and this is the Listen Now campaign, which is an initiative by Tobin Brothers Funerals. Tobin Brothers are very keen that we have better and more conversations around mental health during this awful time of COVID. Uh, today, I wanted to catch up with Dr. Stephen Parnas. And Dr. Parnas is an emergency physician who has been very active on social media throughout COVID and has been making a great deal of sense. Stephen, first, uh, first question that I think you always need to ask somebody uh, is, uh, how are you? How are you going? Mm -hmm. I'm under the pump at the moment, Justin. Um, uh, as we speak, it's a, a very difficult time in emergency medicine. Um, Melbourne's COVID cases are increasing so it's a case of trying to uh, rapidly rejig systems and look after my colleagues and very importantly, to try and look after myself uh, yeah. in the setting of fatigue, lockdown, all of those sorts of things. Well, let's, let's stay with that for a moment then. I mean, what you say, look after yourself, what do mm. you do? What's one of the first things that you do when you start to, to really feel it? The first thing I try and do is one recognize acknowledge it and not deny it uh, i'm a doctor of 30 years now i like being a person who solves problems that other people can rely on uh, and there are times when i don't have the energy uh, to be able to give as much as i would like so what i try and do is lower my own expectations of myself uh, and seek support from the people I have learned over time uh, I can rely on. Uh, the main person is my wife. Um, now, she happens to be living and working in Brisbane right now. We haven't seen each other for over two months. And yeah, it's that's hard. Tough. It is hard. But I, I look forward to her moving to Melbourne uh, in November. The 19th of November, I'm not counting the days, am I? Um, I, I, have, uh, I have trusted people in my family, particularly my father, uh, who is a very wise man. Uh, I have colleagues uh, who I trust, who I can uh, talk to in a safe space. Uh, and I also have a GP I admire and respect, and I have a psychologist. Uh, all of those things help me uh, when I confront those challenges of emergency work and even in the public space too. Uh, being on social media is a part of my communication, but I tell you, Twitter can be a cesspit. And, oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I attract a lot of antagonism for the things I say sometimes. Stephen, how have you seen in the last 18 months or so, in the last two years, you know, ever since we, we heard that dreadful word, uh, COVID, since, since that, how have you seen things change? Because we've sort of gone from that we're all in it together to much more combative kind of state of being at the moment. What have you seen? Well, I'm, I'm seeing generally uh, the effects of fatigue. Um, we have all been on this roller coaster for 18 months. We have all endured hardship. Uh, and whoever it is you pick in the community, you can find examples of that. Uh, the young child who might not be able to go to the playground or see their friends at school or childcare. Uh, uh, elderly family members who are afraid of getting sick and isolated uh, and unable to be with their family. Um, those who cannot work because their businesses or their employment have been unable to keep them on or they have not been able to leave the house because the regulations cannot allow it. Um, uh, the, those who have pre-existing illnesses that are made worse by being unable to get out of the house. Those who work even harder than normal, uh, who, whose work has gone from hard to uh, really demanding, yeah. who don't have the usual ways of uh, re-energising, um, unable to go away for a, for a break from their home and work, uh, unable to see loved ones. So we've all got it. 
we all look for the end of a painful experience and the uncertainty of the way the pandemic plays out means that we haven't got something that we can hang our hat on. And I see that all the time, even in messages from our political leaders who understandably talk about we would like certain things to be achieved by Christmas. Um, but I know uh, that the virus is no respecter of state boundaries, of important dates in a calendar, uh, of milestones in our lives, like, for argument's sake, the my uh, my eldest daughter's upcoming 21st birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, these are the, the things that I am very mindful of are affecting everyone. And some people are less able to recognise that than others. Uh, it is very common to want to deny these things, to be angry with them, to find someone to blame, to feel withdrawn and depressed about a lack of uh, clarity, a lack of an, a finishing line. Uh, and how we deal with that individually and collectively is very difficult. Well, it, you know, we, we've sort of joked over the years, you know, a, a phrase you would have heard many times is, you know, Dr. Google. Uh, where, where we're in over the last 18 months or so is sort of Dr. Google, Google times a thousand, you know, and, and I note in a tweet, you know, as I said, I follow you on Twitter as, as thousands of other people do. Uh, and a note, that, a line that stood out to me was ignore the bullshit uh, listen to medical advice. And that, that seems to me that that's not the first time you've said that, I'm sure. Uh, you know, I'm sure that's a, something you've repeated over and over again in the last 18 months. I don't pretend to be an expert at communication, uh, but, you know, I've been a doctor 30 years. Uh, I have uh, done public speaking and media for, gee, getting close to 20 now. Uh, and I know that being able, or such an important part of my work as a doctor is to uh, be able to communicate messages. And some of that involves repetition. Some of that involves putting it into language that people can understand. Some of it involves recognising that I'm not talking to a machine and that I'm not a machine. Yeah. I want people to understand that uh, I care deeply. Uh, and that's why I use the term bullshit, because it's very Australian. Uh, it, it, it cuts through a lot of stuff. Um, uh, and I think there are times when it is appropriate to be circumspect and very diplomatic with language. And I try to focus on an action rather than the individual. Uh, particularly if I don't like what, what is being done or said. Um, but there are times, and, and, and of course, something like Twitter or a three-minute TV interview, you've got very limited time. But uh, uh, sometimes you've just got to drive a point home that these things are not easy. And, of course, I make the comment about bullshit, but it's hard for many people to see that sometimes Bullshit is cloaked in respectability. Uh, you see the the hardcore vaccine refusers who uh, who who know the terms, who talk about evidence, who who are pseudo statisticians, um, who who know how to inject enough doubt, um, uh, and 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 they use those tricks quite effectively. It's very easy to scare people. Um, there are times you need to scare people. Um, uh, seeing what I see at work is scary and it's very easy when those things are confronting to hide away from that and I have the privilege of of being a very in a rare position I'm a senior doctor in public hospitals but I have been able to speak my mind publicly without um without getting shut down by the hospital system, by public health, by uh, governments, to be able to say what I say. And uh, I try and use that, that privilege very responsibly. And most of the time I get it right. Well, I think you, I think you do, very, do it very well, uh, Stephen, if you don't mind me saying. You, you, know, you, you mentioned the things that you see at work um, there's been a, a great deal of focus on mental health, as there should be, but also on suicides. You must have seen um, 
attempts, the aftermath of, of suicide, and just the the destruction that that has been leaving. You know, while we've been um, in in isolation, you know what 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 have you seen, and and how do you process that? Working in emergency, you see you see the really pointy end of uh, mental health uh, when it is mental illness. You see substance abuse, you see serious self-harm, uh, you see uh, people with chronic mental illness getting worse, yeah. and you see the attempts of an overburdened uh, health system trying to deal with that in what I regard as a suboptimal way, uh, and that inflicts uh, not just more suffering on the patient and their loved ones, but on those of us trying to care. It causes something called moral injury, where you feel uh, you 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 feel you suffer because you know that the person is not getting the care that they should be getting. Um, I've taken some heart from the evidence that says that the suicide rate hasn't gone up, which surprises me because um, we know that the manifestations and severity of mental illness have gone up across the board. Yeah. Um, everything from the mild manifestations of anxiety, um, uh, low mood, um, uh, impact on relationships, uh, alcohol abuse, um, uh, all the way through to serious attempts at self-harm. Uh, so uh, like every other aspect of, of, of ill health, we seek to help people understand it. We seek to try and prevent it as much as we can by those messages that in my own way I try to give, whether it's to the patient in front of me or to the public about healthy eating, getting enough sleep, having routines within the constraints of lockdown, doing things that give us joy and distraction, like a, a chat with a loved one over video, getting exercise, getting sunshine, avoiding the things that put more pressure on us, like overdoing it with alcohol, um, and then thinking about treatment and uh, that might mean the GP. It might mean a psychologist. Yeah. It might mean a wise, trusted friend. Um, uh, and then they, they need careful sorting too um, because sometimes a person with the best of intentions can give very poor advice. Stephen, what, what you said there about the suicide numbers being down, there, there is a danger in that, isn't there, at looking at dry numbers um, and saying, well, look, you know, it's because you, it's not taking into account the loneliness, the abuse, the anxiety, the suicide attempts. And the, the psychologists that I have talked to um, have never seen anything like this. They've never seen this, this level of desperation. I, th I think you've touched on something important there. Looking at those dry figures does not tell the full story ever, but particularly in this. No, this is the balance, isn't it, um, between as a, let's say, as a doctor, understanding uh, dispassionate evidence as it is portrayed in a dry peer-reviewed journal article, um, but also the power of those individual stories. Uh, and I think that uh, really the, the uh, only certainty is that our mental health, without exception, has been subject to uh, a prayer that for most of us is unprecedented in our lifetimes uh, because of its severity, because uh, of the so many ways in which it can affect us in every different aspect of our lives, um, and also the fact that it is sustained. Uh, this is not even like a typical disaster that I have encountered in the past. Yeah. The bushfires, mass casualty events, those things come, they spike, and then they go down and you deal with the aftermath. This has been 18 months. It has gone up and down. I mean, you know, here in Melbourne, we're going up on uh, 
you know, the, the, the next peak that we haven't seen since uh, uh, spring last year. So I suspect that when, not if, we get past the pandemic, uh, things that we took for granted in the past will seem beautiful, wonderful, and you won't be able to wipe the smile off our faces. I love that. I love that. I, I think that's a great thought. You, you mentioned too that uh, it's, it's difficult not to take it personally. I think that's such a good thing to keep in your mind. One, you know, is that we, you know, we won't take things for granted, hopefully. The second is that we will come out of this. And the third is while we're in it, try very hard not to take it personally. That's not easy. Um, uh, I try and remind myself when I see a patient in emergency who is often uh, having the worst day of their life um, that this is a person crying out for help. Um, most people uh, are vulnerable. Most people can get out of their depth. Uh, the notion of the, the person who is really uh, evil, uh, that's extremely rare. I could probably count them on one hand after 30 years as a doctor. Uh, so recognising that, that, that helps build empathy and compassion. And another sign for me, that I'm at risk of burning out is when I find it hard to draw on that compassion yeah. um, to find it. So there's that. And it's also a continual reminder to me, what is it that I have some control over? Um, because let me focus on those things and try not to spend too much time on those things that are way outside of my control. Stephen, it's uh, been so good talking to you. Uh, thank you very much. And I, I, I just for everybody watching this right now, you know, we wish uh, you, know, you and your colleagues and everyone working um, in your profession, you know, we, we thank you for everything that you're doing. We know that the hours are long and the conditions are harder than they've been in a very long time. So we, we thank you very much for that. We really do. Thanks very much. I I, I, um, I, I wish every success to, to this program and to those who are watching and listening to maybe help them understand that they're not alone, that uh, uh, we are a community and uh, that even that little glimmer of community can give people hope where otherwise they might think they have none.